and let's authorize. Oops. I think I need to. There we go. So I got to reauthorize. And do 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 do. And let's do that. Sometimes you forget your Google password, and that would suck. But now I have to remember it because I have to do this every single time now. <laughs> And there you go. And I can do that. And here we go. Okay. <clears throat> I think we're finally okay to. Oh, well, let's do. Hold on. We got to share the stream, right? Gosh. <laughs> Painting King Shark conversion. All right. And we're going to add the Twitch and then the YouTube. All right. So they're both on there. Okay, good. All right. <clears throat> so that's that. Welcome to Play It Painted Live. Let me show you guys, get you guys all caught up here on what we're working on. Let me uh, take the autofocus off so that we can focus down. Looks like he's, we're going to do that. And maybe back the camera up a little bit. There we go. That's good. Yeah, so that way you guys can kind of see a little more macro what's going on here. But here we go. Um, I'm going to pull up, uh, I guess I'll pull up the, the Twitch feed. I have to decide which set of comments I want to have on my large screen here. Um, whether or not I'm going to do the Twitch or the... Um, or the YouTube comments here. Uh, so yeah, looks like right now we have uh, we have no viewers. Okay, so there's that. <laughs> um, I guess I'll just put this. I keep getting I don't know. I keep getting asked to do this, so let me just uh, uh, let's see. I'll just say. Uh, Eh, you can see. Well, you know, when you tune in, you tune in. Great. If not, not that big a deal. Okay. So anyways, let's get us all caught up here. Um, so last night I built and kind of primed King Shark here. And uh, he's looking okay. Um, the only issue uh, that I have here. Ooh, that's, let's, we're going to move this sucker up. There we go. Um, the only issue I'm having is uh, when I clipped him off his base, it was he was still too high up. There's still this like fairly ugly gap here, and so I filled the gap with a little bit of pumice um, to kind of give it. I want to give the base a little more texture, so the base is going to be a little more, I guess, three dimensional. Uh, and this is something I've done before with uh, like Mansions of Madness, you know, if, if, if something's not working out, I'll do that. Um, and I just put it on, so it's still, probably still a little bit soft. We're gonna give it another few minutes to dry up there. Um, and in the meantime, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just quickly build and base another miniature that I need to work on this week. And that's gonna be this model here, this uh, limited edition mist. So we're gonna get him built and, uh, and put together and primed and uh i don't know we might do a little bit of work on him too because you know i do have to get him done this week it's interesting that uh, you get his old style art they didn't supply new style art with the card um but you can see from the colors it's, he's a really pale purple and sort of red um like blood red uh, uh detail there so and the miniature comes in two pieces. I'm gonna bend his staff to make that straight. And then you get this teeny tiny little hand here. And you get this one of these slatter bases, which I just wish they came filled, 
I don't like the slot. I, I've never been a fan of the slot of base. Never really liked it. So, um, so let's go ahead and, and get that uh, started. So uh, we are gonna we are gonna do a couple of pins here, um, and uh, I'm just gonna take my file here and just kind of file this down. It's actually the wrong file. I want a flat file. I don't want a round file for this. So if you're just joining us, welcome to Play It Painted Live. Let us know what you're painting or what you should be painting. Uh, tonight, we're working on King Shark, I promise you. But uh, we're going to be building Mist at the same time. Okay, So I'm just going to give that a nice little file. Get that underway. Uh, so now, for you folks that are uh, uh, local to the Southern California area, I'm going to encourage you to go ahead and try to attend uh, my local game, uh, sorry, paint day. Uh, paint day is something uh, that, that I host quarterly at my uh, local gaming shop, Comic Quest. And uh, it's, a, it's a good day. You know, we just get together and uh, get our projects out and we start painting our projects. Uh, or, uh, you know, if you're brand new to painting, you can, uh, uh, you can ask for my assistance and I will help you paint uh, your first miniature, okay? Hey, what's up, Blade Wolf and Albert? I can see the uh, comments coming in now. Welcome to the feed. So uh, this is the limited edition mist that uh, uh, that I uh, that we raffled off last Friday, and uh, the winner, who was Andrew, but he actually gave this to uh, another player. Uh, in our local group who really wanted it. Um, that player asked to uh, go ahead and paint this miniature. Oh, building Cena, nice. On that hunter's kick, huh? Very cool. So he asked for me to paint this. I said, hey, is there a specific scheme you wanted? He said, no, just as long as we know that this is not a Mason's player. <laughs> so I'm gonna stick I'm going to stick reasonably close to a um, to a union paint job on this guy. Okay. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, these are so a couple of the prizes that were raffled off last week. Um, both winners asked for painted. Uh, versions of the model so that's what we do we oblige uh, looks like there's just a tiny little this is always terrifying when you get that tiny the tiny little tags on the extremities like fingers because you don't want to obviously if I go too hard I'll just file the entire finger off um, and I just want to get the finger down to where it looks like a finger and not something terribly unusual. Okay. It's interesting that uh, who won the Dark Knight? I missed out on those. I was out of town. Well, you you didn't actually, Albert. You were still entered in them. You just uh, unfortunately you didn't win any of them. Um, oh, you're talking uh, Heath Ledger Joker. I think was what we auctioned off, um, and uh, Nelson won the Heath Ledger Joker. Uh, Arkham Knight is still, we're actually going to raffle off Arkham Knight this Friday night. Uh, he's going to be one of the prizes that we raffle off. And I'm actually going to add the next, I'm going to drop in the next round of, uh, of raffle prizes uh, that you can donate towards or um, shift some of your, your existing contribution towards. But yeah, yeah, you guys both actually both of you guys because you guys were in and you donated early. You are in every raffle. It's just the only uh, thing is you don't have a focus, so you're kind of by default you're in every raffle once. Um, and I think Albert, your donation does actually qualify you to add a focus of two additional entries somewhere. So. If you see something that you're particularly interested in, in the uh, 
in the raffle, just shoot me a PM, let me know, and then we can uh, we can go from there. So yeah, we're going to add a, a few more things to the raffle, and actually I got some of the price support for the live event today, which is pretty cool. I'm just trying to, right now, trying to make pins that won't jab directly into my feet, or I'm sorry, into my leg. Mm, they're a little long, but that's okay. So a couple of pins there for mist. <clears throat> but yeah, um, I'm going to be dropping some more stuff um, onto the night side of things. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do. I might, I'm, I'm tempted, I'm tempted to drop a bombshell Harley in the, uh, <laughs> yeah, pins that will make me bleed, right, um, into the, uh, the live raffle. Um, and then there's a bat mite that I have as well. Uh, black flash probably drop a black flash into it um, so so yeah it's uh it's time to kick our little campaign here into overdrive so in addition I dropped some stuff onto eBay today and uh, just so you know, a portion of my eBay sales will also go, go towards Extra Life. But because they're eBay sales, you're not going to get any um, raffle entries. You're just going to get whatever you win. Uh, so as of like 10 minutes ago, I dropped three items onto eBay. Uh, I dropped a painted Bombshell Harley. Uh, I dropped a uh, Bat Fleck painted bat fleck, and I also dropped a Malifaux Ramos crew there. So, uh, so I'm gonna, so now, you know, we're gonna start uh, doing the regular, the auctions that I would have regularly done. The only difference is uh, I am gonna be donating a portion of my raffle earnings to the Extra Life campaign. Why are you telling me all of this? Because, <laughs> man, I gotta, uh, you know, we got to make our, our goal here, our fundraising goal. Uh, and on a personal note, I got to pay my property taxes. So I need to sell, 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 essentially. So I'll be selling that. Um, I'll also be selling, um, you know, if you guys play Infinity, I'm going to be selling my Aleph. Uh, it's a pretty neat list. Uh, it's got a lot of characters in it as a as a you know, you might expect from an A-left list. Uh, so that's cool. And what else? I'm just going to be selling stuff, in other words. I'm also going to get, I'm going to put approximately 50% of the uh, Ninja Division price support I received today. I'll be raffling that off online as well so there's going to be a lot of we're going to be a lot of work here at the end and i hope it's worth it <laughs> we'll see so once again if you're just joining us welcome to play it painted live let us know what you're painting what you should be painting i know the title says king shark we are getting back to king shark don't worry just taking a little detour here while something while a couple of things dry on king shark to uh, get uh, limited edition mist started. Oh, I hate that when that happens. Oh, I hate that when that happens. It's like you get it, you get everything done, you get the whole drill, everything looks good, and then for whatever reason, you just have a hard time dropping it in the little channel there. Uh, yeah, I need to take care of my property. Yeah, property taxes are due, man. Yikes. So there's that. And I don't know if I put enough glue in there. Hold on.
it's just kind of odd that his hand was sculpted separately here. I mean, it's not that three-dimensional of a piece. I don't even know why his hand would be. I don't know if he's, his hand's more of like a handshake pose or if it's just standing there. You still need reverse flash. Yeah, who bought? Somebody bought reverse flash at CQ recently. I wanted reverse flash just because I like the miniature, but I don't even. You know, I know Speedsters got a, a big boost here in second edition, so. Uh, so I thought about it, but. Eh. I'm pretty happy where I'm at with my uh, my Wonderland crew. Um, I'm eventually going to sell my uh, League of Shadows crew, and Nelson wants to buy that. Um, and I don't know, man. I might sell. I might. I might sell some more crews. I might sell a Batman crew. We'll see. Might even sell the Arkham Knight Harley crew. I definitely need to paint up that Suicide Squad box I have and sell that too. But I just have, I just got buried in projects, so. All right. So I'm just going to hold him there for a moment. Yes, someone bought it and left Professor Zoom. <laughs> Yeah, who knows? There are people, everyone knows that CQ is the, like, the only shop in the, the region that stocks a sufficient amount of product. And they do a good job stocking it. Although, we haven't seen the uh, resin kits yet. And, you know, I'm, like, bugging the staff there, like, hey, man, let me know when the resin kits come in. And so, it's a test to see if they like me or not. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> if they like me, um, yeah. All right, so now I'll just put him on here. I'm like, all right, is this dry? Mm, it's getting there. It's dry enough for me to prime, so we can start priming now. So. Once again, we might as well prime uh, <clears throat> L.E. Mist while we're working on all this stuff. Hmm, I'd probably like to see the Harley crew out of curiosity. Okay, well I have it, I think I have it posted somewhere. I think I, yeah, I'm pretty sure I, went, I got around to painting the rest of the Pretty sure I got around to painting the rest of it. <laughs> but yeah, I just really got to trim down on my um, on my Batman stuff. I have, uh, you know, I have the crews that I want to play. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think Harley's one of those crews. Although I really love that model. But you know, well, for me, if I really if I really love a model, it's usually good enough for me to just have the opportunity to paint one. Uh, so then I can just move move it out after that. Um, you know, I don't really, as far as Secret Six is concerned, um, I really only run animated Harley most of the time. I do really like Arkham Knight Harley. She's probably my second favorite Harley in the whole game. And miniature-wise, I really love the miniature, but, you know. It's not something I regularly run. It doesn't really make sense for me to uh, to keep it her and her crew, let alone her crew, who I have like basically no intention of running at all. Um, so there's uh, so so there's a, that consideration there. It just makes more the most sense to me to go ahead and you just clear them out. You know, make some room in my bag. For uh, for some other stuff that I'm gonna want. Okay, just doing a quick little clean here, doing a quick little cleanup of my uh, 
airbrush. But yeah. So hope you guys had a good Monday. Uh, mine was okay. Gonna have an interesting week this week. I gotta do a little bit of uh, local traveling, not travel traveling. Um, but I'm gonna be kind of bouncing around this week. Um, the plan, the tentative plan, is to do a proper painting video either tomorrow or Wednesday. Uh, and then Thursday, uh, my schedule is a little up in the air. I would love, love to be able to stream a game of Batman and a game of Wrath of Kings. Would love to be able to do that. Don't know if I'll be able to do it. But I should say, fair warning, um, there is a chance I will be playing, doing my gaming um, out at Game Master. In which case, I would stream uh, the game and I would stream only to Twitch. Okay, so I would not stream them the games to YouTube, mainly because YouTube um, YouTube tends to eat up more bandwidth streaming on YouTube, and Twitch tends to eat up CPU. And when you're out, you know, when you're out at the mall or whatever, uh, the one thing you're gonna be short on is bandwidth. So, uh, so I would prefer to stream on Twitch. And that's another reason why I need to get to 50 followers on Twitch because it really bums me out that, you know, we're gonna go through the effort of uh, streaming a game and because I don't have the requisite amount of followers, it's just gonna wipe as soon as we're done, you know, as soon as we turn off the recording button. That's like really disheartening to me. Okay, I'm still clearing. I got all kinds of paint solid in my ferrule right now and I'm just trying to clear as much of it out of there as possible before I put my airbrush back together. But yeah, I mean, other than that, fairly uneventful Monday. Um, still waiting for Extra Life to fix my donation total because I am I should actually be past the 500 mark at this point but um, you know if you guys are aware of campaigns past I usually set the 500 mark prior to the actual event and then during the actual event we kind of go for stretch goals um, and sometimes we do really well like a couple of years uh, we make it all the way up to like the thousand mark and I, I would love to make it back up there. I don't know if I'm going to because the number of overall donors I have this year over previous years is down. But the donors themselves, the good, you know, the what's making up for that is the donors themselves are donating a lot more than they have in years past. So I have fewer donors, but they're more generous. Um, so when they're when there are fewer donors and they're more generous, I'm more likely to throw, you know, stuff in the prize pool specifically geared towards those donors. Because it, it makes sense, right? I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna be one of my few donors and you're gonna throw a lot of money into that pool, um, you know, I don't wanna I don't want you to win a bunch of stuff that you don't use or you don't like. So, you know. So the donors are, you know, Batman fans, Guild Ball fans, um, and uh, we'll try to generate a little more interest in the uh, the Ninja Division people, the folks that play the Ninja Division games. We'll try to generate a little bit more interest there. Okay, I don't think I got all of the paint out, but that was a lot. It's a lot of, a little bit of solid. It's still, yeah, there's, it's still, there's still actually quite a bit in there.
that's okay. It's pretty good. I mean, I can do something like this and try to push more of it through. Do one more little thing. Oh, hey, what's up, Nelson? Welcome to the feed. Whoa. So earlier today, I was reading, uh, you know, the Arkham City limits, and I was, you know, reading that thread, specifically the thread about Tetch being uh, overpowered and why. And I kind of jumped in it too, and I was like, look, I play him fairly frequently and I will agree that you know he he gets a little out of whack now that we're including him as a free agent and you can do some really filthy stuff with with him now because you can fit him in lists where he really wasn't designed to go in you know previously so uh, uh, so yeah we, we kind of got into uh, some discussion there on the forum uh, or on the Facebook group, which was, which I, I think is good, but you know the my fear is that you know they want to that Knight won't want to revert him back to leader only. Instead, I think they may be looking at nerf, and you know, obviously the character being one of my all-time favorites in the game, that makes me a little concerned, right? Because I still want to be able to run him as leader of the Wonderland crew. It would suck if um, they just nerf him across the board. Which, you know, that's a real possibility. That they nerf him across the board and then leave him in as free agent. And then, you know, I get I lose on two fronts, right? Because then he is no longer a leader. And then, um, and on top of that, um, he gets nerfed. So that would hurt me on the that would hurt me in the the very two ways in which I use Tetch, and you know, and it's a, what's upsetting about that is this idea that you know put yourself in my shoes. Um, I was one of the very few people that ran a lot of Tetch prior to Second Edition, and I ran him in two very specific ways. I ran him obviously as leader of the Wonderland crew which was not a popular crew in second edition. I'm sorry, in first edition. Because, you know, he, it, they just didn't seem outwardly powerful to, to a lot of people. So I lose there because I can't run my Wonderland crew the way I want to. And then I would also lose in terms of Secret Six, just, a, you know, a general nerf on a character that is very bodyguard dependent. Um... That was the that was the the downside to taking him in Secret Six is yeah you get this really cool character, but he's very difficult to protect on Secret Six, and I think you know we can uh, you can look as you know as proof of that you can look to the last time uh, I ran him against uh, Nelson's Batman crew, and Batman just basically dropped on top of Tetch and just unloaded on him, base and and kept him out of the kept him out of that game entirely. So, you know, that's not, that's not a call to buff Tetch, but what I'm saying is he, he was at a, that was a, the disadvantage to taking him on the team, was that he, you couldn't, he was very hard to protect. Uh-oh. Am I supposed to get rid of that? I think I am. Hold on. Am I supposed to get rid of that? That looks weird. This little bit of, I don't know if that's flash or, I can't tell. It just looks weird to me. Should I just, I should just pop it off, huh? No. <clears throat> he doesn't he need to be nerfed, just revert him back to leader only. Yeah, just revert him back to leader. Cause then, you know, it's everybody else gets a slight buff and he would get the buff of being able to hire into organized crime which is the same buff that 
Two Face and Black Mask and Lex Luthor, they all get. So I think that's only fair. Leave him in as leader. Give him his uh, leader specific equipment cards. And then just leave him where he is in Secret Six as well. But we'll see what Knight does. I mean, the official card isn't out anyways, and it even hasn't been leaked yet. So the only thing we know from it is that was a leak. That was a second edition leak from back when they were teasing second edition. I love the energy of this model. Super cool. Also working on Brewer's building. Oh, nice. I'm going to take that to mean building Brewer's. Not a specific um, building dedicated to Brewer's, but building the physical Brewer's models, I assume. Okay. So let's prime. I'm just going to reprime. King Shark's base here with the added bit of texture. Because we're going to make that work into something. I just don't know what that something is yet. Got to kind of hold this model upside down. Make sure I'm getting all the, the bottom angles. I really do like this model. Too bad I don't really like Miss the Player. Sorry, my brain is off. Don't worry. Mine has been off for some time. <laughs> Join the club. Oh, that's nice. I'm telling you, that's cool. Okay. And I'll do a little. I'm going to do a little shade here on King Shark. We got to. We got to. Paint his little black undies. Nice. <laughs> King Shark. That's going to be a fun, fun model to throw on the board. Uh, like I said, I'm just going to use him with my Secret Six. He's going to be my stand-in for uh, the Parademon. Even though I already have a Parademon model. It's just cool. Alright. Let's move on to the next color. Yeah, I think tomorrow we'll do a proper... Tomorrow night we'll do a proper paint video for uh, for Mist here. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So now. You can kind of hear the the paint 
rasping a little to come out. The text, the shadows and the textures you get on this model are just amazing. Oh man, it's going to be a shame to send you to somebody else, buddy. Although, like I said, do not do well with mist. But man, is that a cool mini. That's pretty damn sweet, if you ask me. I didn't realize how big Cena is. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Well, yeah. He's a big dude. Drop a little gray here. Ba, ba, da, ba. And that. And then I'm going to do a little gray here on King Shark's. Belly, right? Just a little bit down here in the throat. Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay. All right. Now let's do the. Uh, Let's just do a little touch of white. Ba, ba, da, bum. Now you got it stuck in my head. Okay. Do, do, do. <laughs> okay. So now we're gonna. So just the extreme top edge. Man, that's so damn cool. I freaking love the... I love the lighting on this model. You have a good sculpt like that. I'm half tempted to just force myself to get good with mist. The brewers I have were in a discount bin. Well, yeah, brewers are going to be brewers and masons and hunters. That's, oh man, it's so sweet. I'm just totally jonesing on that. It's so dope, man. So I figured I would just put in a small six-man team together for sure. I love my little six-man Mason uh, Brewers team. That's so dope. You could tell how freaking cool that's going to be just from the Zenithal Prime. All right, and then. And we'll I'm just going to give uh, King Shark here just a little bit of lighting effect. Nothing too big. Right, because we're going to. I'm actually going to shade him down a little bit. Ba, 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 ba. Okay. 
looking pretty cool. Okay. Looks good to me. And as badly as I want to work on this guy, I don't know, that, that may have to wait until tomorrow. Ah, I want to get that base color down, though. So cool. Oh, man. Really want to do it. What am I saying? You guys won't get mad at me if I do the base color right now, right? You guys are just going to tune in and watch me do it again anyway, right? I could totally do it. No one's going to say anything. I'm not going to get in trouble. I won't report to anybody. All right. <laughs> Tapper, Tapper, Scum, Friday Hooper, Paint Pot. Okay. So we're going to make... I'm going to take uh, some purple, and I'm going to make a glaze out of the purple, and then we're going to shoot it on this model, and it's going to be really faint because... Like I said, from the artwork, it's a really pale purple on there. So, so I'm going to use the airbrush um, thinner thinner medium. Whoa, that glaze medium is seen the one I've seen pretty much done. Then I'm going to put in a bunch of glaze medium, and then I'm going to put in some purple. And we're going to shoot this really lightly, like really lightly. And get some hint of the purple in. Ooh, that's a little too light. I'm gonna add. <laughs> I should add. I should add a purple ink to this to give it a little bit more potency. Boop, 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 boop. Where is that purple ink, though? That violet ink, though. There it is. Yeah, I'm going to add some violet ink to this. And this is going to give... The ink is going to give it its potency. Alright. Darth Torlin, hi, PIP. Should be painting, but I found out that a piece of my miniature is off of one of the Malifaux nurses. That sucks. Sorry to hear that, dude. Alright. Welcome to the feed, nonetheless. Okay. So, uh, so we're going to go really, really light here on this. And we're just going to slowly build this. Now, the reason the the idea behind it is we want the zenithal highlights to kind of transmit through still so color is going to be really faint off on the on the outside edges and then it's going to get progressively richer as you go towards the center of the model but you can see with how thin that is how I, how gradually I can build that color You can see how how much it builds there in the middle, and I'm just feathering it off so that towards the outside it's nice and light. Damn, that's cool! I freaking love this. I I love being able to use this like purple ink glaze like this. It's so cool. Look at that.
That's what we're hoping for, man. So awesome. So we're just slowly building that purple. That's freaking cool. Oh, that's so dope. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just really impressed with that with how that turns out when you do it when you do that, right? It's just so damn cool And we're just gonna leave him like that tonight we'll get to we'll we'll get to work on them I'm painting my Terminator Genesis miniature spider tank and this changed my life I can see why you want to want to pin models These fragile legs on the spider tanks Are now like Arnold on steroids <laughs> I had to redo them because my last game, my buddy accidentally broke their legs. Well, that sucks. Arnold, you pin the legs, big, big strong legs. <laughs> All right. All right, I'm going to do. So, similar concept as what we just did with the uh, with mist there is i'm going to take blue ink this time and we're going to shade um we're just going to shade some specific parts of uh of king shark here right so this time we take a little bit of the airbrush thinner and we take a little bit of the glaze medium And this time we're going to take some blue ink. Oh shoot, I'm in the wrong airbrush. Should actually be doing this in the other airbrush. Okay, let's see if I can see if I can transfer this without causing irreparable damage to that airbrush. Let's uh Let's rinse out this airbrush real quick. Just run a little water through it. Yeah, because this is different, so I'm gonna I'm gonna switch to the point two airbrush. Which unfortunately I did not clean the needle out for. So we'll see how this works. This could be a huge mistake, but let's see. I wonder how many times I've said that on my feeds. This could be a huge mistake, but let's see. I think I say that fairly often. All right. Let's see how this looks. Because this is a uh, this is going to be a little more precision stuff than than what I was doing on Mist. It's not bad. Okay. Okay. So, still with me, right? See, I'm just kind of targeting specific low points. To give myself a little bit of shading. And to really exaggerate the colors on the model. How many times do you say what? How many times do I say... Oh, yeah, and Nelson's got it. Trust the process, right? Say that all the damn time. Just trust the process. It'll turn out just fine. What I forgot to mention is you trust the process when it's your process. Don't trust it when it's somebody else's process. 
that you're trying to adopt because you still, even when you learn from other painters, you still have to make it work for you and your own resources and abilities and all that good stuff. So trust the process, but make sure it's your process. Because what you normally do when you learn painting from other people is you you take their process or you'll you'll collect advice from from other painters and then you got to make it your own right you got to make it work for you you can see how the shading looks on this model it looks pretty cool so far we can install a twitch bot and we can count how many times you say something <laughs> yeah once I get to 50 followers and it keeps the uh, keeps the videos for a while so you see how now he's starting to look he's starting to look a little more defined. Ooh, there's something I don't like on his back right now. So I'm gonna Luckily, I'm just going to take a damp brush and move it. That's the advantage to having the glaze medium on there. Uh, yeah, he's still going to need more inks. I, w I really want his, like, his shading and highlighting to just be off the charts, exaggerated, because <laughs> he is a comic book character. I'm going to put a little blue here on the base. Because I want it to look like he's got some water. Like he stepped in a, a little bit of water. So we'll shoot a little bit of blue in there. Well, keep doing what you're doing. And I suggest that you post in the Discord group that I gave you. Saying you're going live. Been trying to help you out on that. I appreciate it. It's just, you know, for me, sometimes it's, it's, you know, all of the different prep I have to do to go live um, is, it's, you know, I know I say I have the camera out in front of me, but like, there's a lot more other things that I have to do before I, I hit the camera on, uh, you know, like everything from putting a baby to sleep, <laughs> What's this painting jazz? I thought this was a live gaming channel. <laughs> What's up, Greenleaf? Um, but yeah, you know, starting with putting a baby to sleep, uh, or making sure a baby gets to sleep, then getting downstairs, then cleaning up down here, uh, then uh, setting up the camera, uh, you know, kicking on my um, uh, X-Split, making sure my miniatures are here, changing water out, cleaning brushes, cleaning airbrushes um, there's a lot of stuff and then by the time the computer comes on like I get down here literally I want to say six to seven minutes before I even before I hit the live button so you know to stop and post and you know I it's nice that I can do tweets like tweets are nice because they're it's built in like right before I go live I can just hit a button and it'll tweet so that's easy for me it's a little harder for me to go okay now I got to go into this other program tell all these other people I'm going live and I totally appreciate that you do it Tori because I do realize like that's another thing um, but you know it's the this uh, this is like an ever evolving process and I have to keep you know the we keep adding layers of complexity to it. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying that that's a, you know it's going to take a little while before I have all of the various components in play, and um, and I'm I'm reasonably comfortable doing them. So minstrel. 
All right. So I'm going to do, yeah, I'm just going to do a really generic just shot of green on the on the base here. Just so that there's a little, see how that's like a little more blue green there. So it looks like a, like I've got a little bit of the the ocean here. There we go. Little king shark action there. Nice. Okay. All right, so now, uh, is there anything else left for me to airbrush? Probably not. I think I got all the, the major components down here for King Shark, and then it's just going to come down to painting this bad boy. So let's turn off the airbrush. And let's get to painting. Let's see. Uh, appreciate you doing your channel, Octave. Thank you, sir. Albert, I'll see you next month at CQ. The 4th, hopefully. Not sure I can make it out this Saturday. Oh, yeah, this Saturday is uh, paint day. And they just, uh, I don't know. Paint days are interesting. <laughs> I always love paint. I always have a good time with paint days. Um, but I've learned not to sweat attendance for paint day because paint day just sort of happens and you know if i get three people that show up the three people have a good time if i get 20 people that show up 20 people have a good time and i try not to stress out in either situation because it really is like it is my favorite event to run to run is uh paint day absolutely love it You know, I, I, my favorite is you get these uh, people that come in during paint day and they're, they're like scared. They like hide behind their friend or they hide behind the turret or they're hiding behind, you know, uh, some store staff that's walked them back there. And they're like, hey, Octave, this person has never painted before in their life. Let's teach him how to paint. I'm like, okay, let's do it. And so they start there and uh, then we get them a couple of minis, I shoot some primer on them, hand them a brush, teach them, like, I teach them, I usually teach, like, one technique, like, nothing, nothing earth-shattering, because, I mean, when it came down to it, I couldn't teach anybody anything earth-shattering, because <laughs> I don't know anything earth-shattering, I just know my process, <laughs> right, we just trust in the process, like, I know that, and things make sense to me, um, and you know you when you've done this when you do this as often it's just there you just kind of have a natural cadence to to what you're doing and it it i found that people some people try to overthink it and they they, they don't understand your process and it kind of drives them a little bonkers um and you know it is what it is it's okay uh, but, you know, really w what you're, as someone that's like trying to show people how to paint, what you're ultimately just, the only thing you're, you're trying to do ultimately is you're just trying to get people to relax, right? You only, that's it. You, you, you they're, you're just trying to get them to the point where they can relax and they can be receptive to, um, you know, pushing paint across a miniature. Actually, technically speaking, they're pulling paint across a miniature, and then kind of keep uh, keeping their mind open with regards to how uh, the miniature can turn out. Um, I liken this to um, for any of you guys who has who have ever painted in your house, um, and if you've ever worked with faux finishes. I don't even know if you guys know what the hell a faux finish is, but uh, any of you like do-it-yourselfer people, or if you've worked in the trades, like you'll know 
what a faux finish is. Um, faux finish is essentially it's uh, it's like when you when you're at a restaurant or something and you look on the wall and the wall looks like it you know it's got a it's got weird texture to it. It looks you know almost some cases it looks like marble and some cases it looks like suede on the wall. But you know you see a bunch of like like variegated multicolor um, a variegated multicolor finish on the wall. And you're like, you know, you may not even be consciously aware of what that is. That's a faux finish. Okay, that's uh, that somebody applied a specific paint and then applied a technique to it. And it, it, it gives this real rustic or artistic feel to the wall. And, um, you know, like I said, you'll most commonly see it in commercial settings. Um, it's not, faux isn't very popular with uh, uh, the homeowners these days, but it, you know, every now and then it, it, it gains popularity. You've got like your, you know, Joanna Gaines and I forget the other, the, you know, the, like the Martha Stewart's, the modern Martha Stewart's, and they try to teach you how to do this like crafty shit in your house. That's what I'm talking about. It's Relax, take it easy, says uh, Andrew. What's up? Take it easy. I always think of uh, uh, Nacho Libre. One of my favorite movies, by the way. And I can't even explain why, but I love Nacho Libre. Um, hey, take it easy. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Anyways, when you're trying to teach people faux, they freak out, right? Let's, let's pretend that, like, for example... Let's pretend this is a faux finish, this weird kind of multicolor thing on your wall, and it's got a green background, and it looks weird as hell. Um, but there are people that are like, oh my god, I love that. It's, you know, you're such an artist. Like, some somebody's going to look at that and go, wow, that's really deep. There's real good meaning here. This is very, uh, I don't know, they're going to come up with some some garbage for what that is, right? Then you're going to say, no, 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 it's really easy to do something like that. It's just a technique, right? And then they're going to try to do it, and they're going to expect in their mind, um, they're going to expect that whatever they do with the airbrush in this case, whatever they do is going to look exactly like the sample, right? And like, you know, me as the instructor, I did all of this exactly on purpose. This little heavier spot here, the black right there, this right here, they're going to look at that and go, oh, he, he did that exactly on purpose. It was 100% intentional. And so they're going to try to apply the same technique with the expectation that they're going to get exactly this. That's totally wrong. It's totally the wrong way to, uh, to approach um, teaching people how to paint, specifically teaching people how to paint in a creative manner. It's not about getting that exact thing. You're, all you're really trying to do, once again, is you're just trying to get them to calm the F down <laughs> and relax and get to the point where they're going to accept something that has the same technique um, but doesn't come out exactly the way they imagined. That's what miniature painting is. And that's why so many people give up with miniature painting. Like they, like they, they see a white dwarf. They see, uh, you know, they see their favorite guys online painting stuff. And they're like, well, if I don't get that, you know, I, I, I'm going to buy the $300 airbrush and I'm going to buy the stupid Games and Gears $12 tube. And I'm going to buy the, uh, what's that, the French uh, wet palette that I'm going to buy that for $35. So I'm going to buy all this top gear. Uh, I'm going to buy Series 7 brushes. And if it doesn't look exactly like, you know, uh, Dizzy Angel Demon, like if it doesn't exactly look like. One of, these, one of these like really um, renowned painters, then they give up, right? They might paint the very first part of a face or, you know, a, a space marine shoulder pad and it doesn't look exactly like they want and they spend, they end up spending, you know, three to five hours on it and then they just give up. They're like, oh, painting's not for me. I'm not going to paint anymore. Um, but that's why, like, that's why I kind of stress with people I'm teaching how to paint, I try to just stress like the the bigger concepts, like the bigger, the easier techniques, and then tell them 
what they can and can't expect using those techniques, right? Like, I didn't know that my king shark would look exactly like this. The everlasting wet palette. Yeah. I mean, it looks like a cool product. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying there's people out there that are like, oh, I need to have that that specific wet palette. I need to have a stay wet palette because my favorite painter online uses a stay wet palette. Uh, and, it, you know, and then I'm going to start to paint. And if it doesn't look exactly like I had prescribed it, then I did something wrong and I'm going to quit. You know? That's not how... And what I'm trying to say is that that's not how painting works. That's not how painting works. And if that's your expectation, you're going to not paint for very long. It's not going to be a thing for you. I think King Shark just has... I don't think he has pupils, right? Like a normal shark does. I think it's just... I think he just has white pupils. I don't know. Let's see. I'm going to look at some uh, stock footage of King Shark here. Some online footage of King Shark. It's called Random Brushes in... Whoa! That special pack of Walmart acrylic brushes and time. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, tell me if I'm wrong, but that's I've run into that quite a bit with people that want to learn how to paint. Like, it, and like one of the very first things is like, you got to ask them, like, do you really want to learn how to paint? Or are you just out to like copy an exact thing and have that exact thing? Because those are two different things as far as I'm concerned. Um, because if you learn how to paint, you learn concepts that you can apply to different models, not I can paint that exact model. It's like teaching someone, like, you know, when you draw, like, I'm not a good artist. I'm a fairly shitty artist. The only thing I know how to draw, like, back in the day is, like, Spider-Man. That's it. That's all I really ever learned how to draw when I was a little kid. Um, but I never learned how to draw, draw, right? I never learned about perspective and shading and all that kind of stuff. Um, so do, do I know how to draw? No, I don't actually. I only know, I know, apparently know this one very specific thing, uh, and I know how to copy it. Um, I still need to learn how to do non-metallics. Yeah, I can, for sure, I can improve how I do mine, because mine are super cheap and super quick, but, you know, there's a, a much better way to do non-metallics. All right. Let's look at some images of King Shark. Yeah, he just kind of has black eyes with a little bit of, uh, with a little white glimmer in them. Well, here's one where he actually has eyes from the TV show. Looks like he, he has eyes in the comic. In that frame, he has red eyes. That one he has black with white eyes. So it looks like I can go a number of different ways here. So I can decide for myself like what what should what should King Shark's eyes look like. And I think in this case I think I will do let's try red eyes. I'm gonna paint uh, I'm gonna paint his speedo in first. I'm King Shark. <clears throat> yeah, I think you just need to give them the core concepts. Priming, picking color, washing, shading, and sealing. Yeah, that's it. I mean, um, and, but the, the part I was trying to, to say here is that when you're teaching people how to paint, you got to manage that expectation up front. Like you got to be like, okay, you know, you might be here thinking like you got, you just got a Angel Geraldes class for free. <laughs> it ain't gonna be that kind of day, man. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna pick a probably a Reaper miniature. 
maybe an orc or a dwarf or something, something D&D-ish, or maybe a chibi. If you show up and say, I specifically want to learn how to do chibi, I can, we can do that. Um, but you do, you know, you break out, here's your subject, uh, and then uh, and then here's how you paint it. That's it. That's, that's all. That's all you got. King Shark's got some, some undies. Okay. Look at him go. Look at that underwear wearing bastard go. Okay. <clears throat> Let's get some white on this dude. Dude. Where's like my regular Vallejo white? Why am I bad at this? It's off white. Here we go. Good night. Gotta go to bed. All right. Good night, Andrew. Thanks for popping in, man. That white is not mixed up. Practice is key too. Everything needs to learn practice with it with anything for sure you know done building models see ya nice what is going on with this white all right so yeah for sure practice is a big one too you know the with people who already know the basic techniques when they ask me like how do you how do you paint how do you learn how to paint and i just tell them just you know, you get basics down, just paint. Just paint the shit out of everything. Just keep painting. And then when you're done, paint some more. And uh, and watch some videos and learn some other techniques. And then slowly start to incorporate those techniques in. And then you paint some more. And then you paint some more. And that's, that's the process. You know. For sure, I'm still learning how to paint. I'm still learning uh, techniques. There's a, I still have a long way to go, and I, you know, I may have hit the ceiling of my abilities, or I should say, abilities times patience, because that's what it what it comes down to. <clears throat> All right, so now let's do. I'm gonna do a little. I'm gonna do a little effect on the teeth here. So we're gonna do a little bit of golden yellow on the teeth and the claws and stuff. Actually, golden yellow is the wrong color, but I'll, I can use golden yellow here on the, he has like a rope around his hand here that I can paint. But yeah, I mean, painting is, in my opinion, painting is supposed to be super fun. If you're doing it right, then you should really, I think, and I'm not saying this is that painting is for everybody, but for most people, if you're doing it right, you know a few techniques, um, and you know how to like pace yourself, painting should be super fun. Cat will be protecting the cast. The cask. Oh, cool. All right. Uh, let's see. So I need like a bone color. Throw me a bone here. It's not a bad color. This is a good. This is a good color for the teeth and the bone and that kind of stuff. I don't know if I should go red on the eyes. I think the eyes look pretty good, actually. I don't know what I need to do there. Let me what, let me know what you guys think, like suggestions. Should the eyes be? Should the eyes have pupils? 
should they be black with the you know the little bit of white uh, the white dot in them or should they be red Awesome king shark action here. Painting should be a pleasant hobby for sure. I think it should be. I know when I painted 40k, for the most part, I hated it. You know, just way too many troops, way too much repetition. And, you know, and it cost a lot of money. And, you know, you'd get the really nice vehicles or the nice uh, characters and all that kind of stuff. But it, not only was it, oh gosh, never mind. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna be quiet. <laughs> yes, painting should be pleasant. Totally agree. <clears throat> Reaching red eyes. I mean, I could try. I don't know. It just looks kind of weird. I'm not sold on that idea. Let's try it. Whatever. Worst comes to worst, I can repaint the eyes. It's not that big a deal. So if we did red eyes like that, oh, that's kind of cool. Pretty cartoony. Not bad. I don't know. I don't think that's terrible. Okay, so now we're going to get a little bit of like an off-white type color. I'm going to use this white gray to be the highlights on the teeth and stuff. The teeth and the claws. Just gonna hit the basically just the edges of the teeth. I don't really need to do that on the claws, but it looks a little bit better. This character is super fun. Let's do, uh, we're gonna do a little bit of purple um, in that uh, he looks like he has an, like an octopus in his hands. I, I swear I just had purple out. <laughs> what did I do with it? I just had it out. We were just using it. That's nice. This heavy violet's a nice color. So now you can totally tell he has an octopus in his hands.
So I'll let that dry. Okay, so now let's do um, some of the cobblestone here. In the flash, he had the whole eyes black, but I think glowing red would be cool. The model's starting to look super badass. Thanks, Nelson. Appreciate it, man. I'm worried that the cobblestone pattern that I typically do might be a little too much for this miniature, but we're going to try it anyway. So it's like he's got... It's kind of like he's standing um, on a street and like the the rush of the sewer water is part of his base as well. Let's do a little bit of brown, like a darker, like a leather brown or something. So with all the police sirens and stuff, or what happened? Thought I lived in a good neighborhood, man. The hell is going on? Actually, uh, sirens out here because this is uh, there's a big retirement community out here. It's usually fire or ambulance, you know, responding to uh, someone passing or, you know, more of like a age-dependent medical issue. <laughs> so now, I'm going to throw in some brown. Yeah, and this, this does look a little busy right now. But I'm hoping that doesn't look too bad when, when all is said and done. Like it looks, I'm hoping it looks a little more like my Mansions of Madness bases. Okay, yeah, there's just a lot going on here. between the okay this is just kind of weird this uh this line here needs to look straighter looks like he has like boxer briefs on <laughs> okay Looking pretty good. Let's do, uh, you guys were saying like glowing red eyes, so let's try. I don't know if I can do glowing red eyes, but I can do, hmm. I can do a little bit of yellow on the edge, on the outer edge of the eye, and that will give it a little bit of interest. Like I can go like this and just stick a little tiny little dot over that yeah and I'll give it just a little bit of interest I know you probably can't see it on uh, on the camera there we go okay so now I mean he's looking pretty good we want that uh, we got to do a couple of things here. Uh, one is I'm going to take some of this Agrax Earth Shade, and I'm going to shade the parts of the base that aren't the sewer runoff stuff. So this is going to go like this, and it's just going to help define the individual cobblestones and bring all of these colors together: the gray, the brown, and the the red. So you can see it already starting to define there. 
so that should look pretty cool. And we're also going to incorporate it like towards the bottom of the runoff. So again, the idea here is that it's he's sort of standing on a he's he's standing on a regular cobblestone street like the rest of my miniatures, but he's got like some watery runoff accompanying him. Okay, so now what we're going to do while that's drying, uh, we have a couple other things we can do. Like we can take a little bit of this, um, this white and just really lightly get some of the tops of this texture just to kind of show some turpidity to the water. Right? You want to show just a little turbulence to the water. You don't want to overdo it. But the whole idea is, you know, there's going to be a little bit of turbulence. So that water there. Okay. I'm still pissed. I can't find her arm. Can only be around my desk area. Been on the floor for a while too. That sucks, man. That is a bummer. Sorry to hear that. Uh, let's see. So now um, I need to make like a blue ink glaze. And we're going to start to apply this ink glaze around the shadowy parts of the miniature. And it's just to further kind of exaggerate what we've done so far. Right, the idea is, let me let me show you what we're doing here. So, about equal parts um, blue ink and glaze. But what I'm gonna do is like, I'm gonna get it real thin and then start to just kind of work it into the crevices of the model. Right there, right? And then the shadows here. And then you can see, like, I might have pulled off, a, like, done more than I should have there on the side of the face. So then just get your damp brush and feather it out. Right? Because the idea is you just want all these different shades of blue going. And you want the shades of blue to really kind of accentuate the the highs and lows of the model. And that's what gets you that really nice, um, that really nice color gradient. And it just exaggerates every little feature. Like you can see there, right? I'm just gonna draw these right into the, right into the crevices. And like there's too much right there. So again, you just move it, feather it out. So you can see I like put way too much there on the fin. Same thing. Just take your brush, feather it out. Because you want that transition to look good. And you want to have, you still want to have that exaggeration on the bottom of it. So even like individual muscle groups you're going to shade around. And I've seen like really, really good painters do this super precisely. And it looks amazing. 
especially they'll do like a couple of layers of the same color ink and really get it really get those transitions you know to look to pop Here you can see I'm just kind of pulling everything down into the shade of your areas of the model. <clears throat> but yeah, here's how you just draw a little bit more interest around the muscular the musculature of the of the mini. You can see I have way too much there. So we'll feather out this. See how that we'll feather out that line right there. And just kind of draw the color out. Love that. Right. Got super quiet. I know, right? I guess everyone's tired now. Believe it or not, this model is nearly done. Because all I really had to do was drop the shading on this and the rope. Maybe do a quick highlight on the octopus. Right. Let's do, we're going to do a sepia shade on the rope. In fact, I'm going to do a sepia shade on the, on the underbelly of this guy. Or maybe I should do a, maybe I should do a flesh wash shade because he's, is like kind of a person so we'll do a little flesh wash and water We're just going to use that to kind of define all the abdominals, right? Pretty cool. Just a little more, just brings a little more interest to the model, right? And then we can just do it. Actually, just do a teeny little highlight on it.
in these areas. Okay. Pretty good. All right. Let's do a quick little highlight on the octopus. So not, not too much to do here on this guy. Uh, okay, so now, uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some black ink to my blue ink glaze mix, and that's going to uh, that's going to darken up that ink, and then I can use that as like the super super shadow. The minute I find my black ink. <laughs> Why is my black ink? Sometimes it's up here, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's neither, neither place. Oh, it's got to be here. I'm just not looking hard enough. There it is. See? Just wasn't looking hard enough. Looks good. Thanks. Hey, what's up, uh, Atomico? Thanks for uh, joining the feed. I watched your uh, video on social media. Um, it made me laugh. I liked it. You know? You're not going to spend your energy entertain, you know, being some kind of personality. I love that. <laughs> I'm like, well, that's true. I totally respect that. I will assure you that I'm not, for me personally, I'm not a, I'm not like a personality. I'm just, a, uh, what's the word? I'm just an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the technical term for the uh, kind of personality I run <laughs> but uh, I assure you it's the same with or without the camera <laughs> All right, so now like I said we're just gonna just kind of further accentuate the shadows here. By drawing color down in there. Yeah, but no, seriously, I did. I, I really like that video. I was like, these are, you know, I hope you do some more just kind of vlog style, you know, share your thoughts with the, uh, with the audience. Because that's legit, man. Like, there's too much manufactured shit on social media and YouTube and all this kind of stuff, right? Like, and I, I don't know. I, I, I think to a degree, I'm probably guilty of some of that, too. You know, like, oh, this is my Instagram life. Isn't it awesome? And, you know, like, if you look at my Instagram, a lot of times it's just stuff I've painted or, you know, a game I've played or something like that. But I don't know. I, 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 some of the people 
that are my friends or my acquaintances or whatever. Like I look at their quote unquote Instagram life and I'm like, man, you don't live like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I totally get what you're saying. Um, but I don't, you know, I don't know how much of it I'm, I'm guilty of. I know I'm guilty of some of it. I know that, you know, I would be, I would be remiss if I, if I were to sit here and go, oh no, I never do any of that kind of shit. Oh, for sure. I do. You know, there's stuff that I post. It's like, oh, well, this is going to look good on my Instagram life or some shit like that. And I try, and it's not like I'm consciously doing it, but, um, you know, it's like, oh, I, you know, this is cool or well, this is weird or whatever. And I'll post it. It's just a lot of work. It is like just trying to keep, um, kind of trying to keep like a, the kind of updates and stuff on social media. There's some people that just naturally, I don't know, millennials or something, they're just naturally good at that. So they don't sweat it like like the older guys sweat it. But yeah, like sometimes I get self-conscious about that. I'm like, this just seems pretentious. What the hell am I doing? Why would I do that? You know, why would I, why would I post that? Um, so a lot of times I don't post stuff that I'm tempted to post. I just let it go. Um, and I think for the most part, the stuff that I post is just stuff that, stuff that I do, um, or stuff that I find interesting. You know, I kind of, with, um, especially with the shit I post, like my family, uh, pictures of my kids and all that kind of stuff. It's like, I don't expect people to be hemming and hawing over pictures of my kids. Uh, you know, maybe some of my wife's um, lady friends, maybe they do that kind of stuff. And, you know, that's cool. But I don't like, I don't expect like you guys to be like, wow, look at how cute his kids are. Like, <laughs> you know, on a daily basis, you know, you may only need to see it. You know, if you're, if you're curious, you may only want to see my kids once every a uh, couple of months or something on it show up on the feed. Now, the reason why I put them on the feed, though, honestly, is so that I can go back and look at that. You know, that's, it's not really about posting that stuff, trying to get, you know, people to approve of the cuteness of my kids or anything like that. I do it so that I can, like, I can go back and go, oh, hey, you know, there's that, that video I really liked of my, my two kids, uh, you know, having fun on the on the couch or, or wrestling or that kind of stuff. That's what it really is for me. I know that there are other people that don't, that kind of have a different take on that. Like, you know, it's got to, we're going to do this because, you know, it, it, because my kids are cute and you better celebrate their asses or some shit like that. Um, I don't know. So... I don't think I really went anywhere with that point. <laughs> it is what it is. Don't think I really went anywhere with that point, though. <laughs> but yeah, it was cool, though. I liked uh, I just liked the that whole engagement of, uh, you know, here's here's how I look at social media. And, uh, you know, it's just kind of weird. Some of it doesn't really help. Totally agree with you there. Um, yeah, I mean, back when I started this YouTube channel, I I didn't have any intention of doing a, a YouTube channel. I just, I, in fact, I thought it was kind of weird. I'm like, okay, you like your hobby, I get it. Why you gotta put it on fake internet TV? That's what it was. That's what YouTube. How we regarded YouTube when it first came out. It's like, oh, this is like, there's like actual TV and then like fake internet TV that has these like shitty wannabe celebrities and shitty bands and all this kind of stuff. Just like MySpace and all that. Like, you know, failed, uh, fa failed things that couldn't make it into the mainstream. They, they end up on MySpace or YouTube or Twitter or whatever. And these days, it's like the opposite, you know? 
there's like, like the legacy stuff, legacy media and uh, and the TV shows and all that kind of stuff. No one watches that stuff anymore except for the, you know, the older generations. Um, you know, the closest people get, the, the modern generation gets to watching TV series and all that kind of stuff is uh, usually from uh, Netflix streaming services and that kind of stuff, you know. Does he need, do I need to do um, more highlights on him to kind of get him, uh, I mean, he's super exaggerated right now, like almost to a fault. Do I need like that top level highlight? And I think the answer, I think I just answered myself. Yes, I do. <laughs> So it's just going to use a super pale blue and really thin the crap out of it. Let's see. So you can reminisce. Don't worry too much about others. Kids grow up fast. I'm sure you know. Next thing they'll have girlfriends. May as well use my iPod for something or else it's a glorified paperweight. Yeah, dude. Like, But, but here's the thing. Like I said, um, when I first started doing YouTube videos, I did them just for myself. I did them like, oh, I want to go back and look at this thing that I did or um, you know, I want to leave notes for myself or re recall a, a game that I played or some shit like that, right? So I did it just for myself. And the weird thing is, people started like tuning in and watching it. I'm like, huh, well, okay, I learned something new about some miniature bag or, you know, I learned about uh, some game I'd never heard of or, you know, I watched this guy paint this thing and I picked up something. It means, you know, it's a huge compliment when established painters or gamers and stuff, they'll come, you know, they'll they'll leave me a comment on my channel or they'll they'll reach out to me and go, hey, I, I watched your feed and I learned something. I, I had no idea that this did this. I had no idea that you could do it that way. Um, I said, that's a huge, you know, it's, it's a huge compliment to me, but also it kind of encourages me to continue to post, right? Because it's like, oh, you know, somebody got something from it. And if somebody, if anybody got something from, from, you know, me just doing, just posting something or leaving my thoughts somewhere or, uh, you know, interacting with the, with the internet or with social media or something like that, then it's totally worth it right? Like I keep saying like on this feed that, you know, I've threatened to shut down this feed dozens of times, dozens of times. Like, yeah, this could be the last video for my channel. And just, you know, the, the, the growth isn't there. Um, if no one's watching, no one's benefiting from it. Why bother? Why not just, just, I can just paint my own stuff and look at it or sell it on my own. Right. I said this like I've said this like dozens of times on the feed, and and it's like all it takes is like one person to go, you know what? I, I get something. I get something watching this. So can you please keep doing it? And that's like kept me going um, for like the past probably the past five years or so. Is somebody piping up and going, hey, you know, I, I actually did get something from that feed, or from your from your uh, from your live stream or, or from your channel in general, can you keep, can you please keep doing it? And thank you, you know, th those are cool. Cause it's like, okay, well, I'm, I'm actually being a benefit. I'm not just on here going, please pay attention to me for no, no good reason. Um, so that's what I'm getting at. So right now, just to dial up the comic book a little bit, I'm applying, I'm applying a highlight, like a really pale gray highlight to kind of get the, accentuate the features again a little bit more each time. And you, do, you just do this thin enough to where you know, you don't want to see any texture from the brush strokes or anything like that. You just feather. 
put your highlight down and then basically feather it in. But I like this particular project, like this one's just for me. Can you please keep up with your stream? <laughs> yes, sir. I will do what I can. I don't realize I had this weird chunk. I don't know what that is. Just a weird chunk there on his foot. We'll call it cancer that sharks are highly resilient to. So that's totally a benign tumor. So how's he looks? He like to He might be a little too exaggerated now. Like that's a lot of comic book. Let's see. This model should also be used for DC minis to fight Aquaman or something. Yeah. You could run him in a crew with uh, Black Manta. Ooh, that's way too much white right there. Gotta tone that down. See, I just don't have a, oh, a good transition there. So I'm trying to ink that. There we go. That looks a little more, a little better blended. I think he's looking pretty cool. Let's uh, let's put the the black ring down around his base. I'll let this sucker dry. I am gonna actually, when I seal him, my plan is I'm gonna do a. Uh, that's wrong. I am gonna do a gloss coat first, and then a matte coat. Because he's such a big mini. That he's gonna and you know big metal minis chip really easily. Does King Shark have a stack card or using Killer Croc? I'm actually using Parademon because <laughs> I'm gonna field him with um, you. I, I suppose you could use the Killer Croc stack card if you weren't running him with Secret Six, but. My intent is to run this guy with Secret Six, so. Not sure how I feel about his basing. You know, it wasn't the best job I've done. It looks interesting, but technically not a very good job. He's sort of still floating over it in, in, in parts. And I should have actually sculpted, um, or I should have actually um, done a better job 
uh, dremeling him off the original basing he had. So that's just weird, that spot right there. It's not very good. I hope they do make a King Shark. Cause man, this is this isn't even King Shark and this is fun to paint. Pretty awesome. I think King Shark will will be um I think he's going to when they when they do finally make him he'll be part of the Central City villains. So he'll be in there with uh Gorilla Grodd and all that, you know. Basically the Flash villains. Uh and then he'll obviously he'll be allowed you'll be allowed to take him in Secret 6. So Uh, let's see. Good point, Blade Wolf. Yeah, when Octave is not running Secret Six, you could use that model instead of Killer Croc for sure. So we're going to let him dry. But uh, yeah, here's what we're looking at. Still drying. Well, yeah, pretty simple paint job. Just blue muscular guy. <laughs> shark a shark I'm gonna show you guys Cavanatron uh, what's the company the miniature from bro this is uh, from Reaper this is a Reaper where shark um, originally had uh, it, it actually is supposed to come with a tail or you're supposed to stick a tail on it but because it's I'm because I converted him to be King Shark, King Shark doesn't have a tail, so I basically sculpted that on and dremeled off the, the rest there. Um, yeah, let me show you guys something since we're we're still here before before I head out. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna let you guys know some of the price support that's coming up for my extra life campaign. Um, what would Scarecrow be classified? I think Scarecrow just has his own... Oh, uh, Militia, right? He just goes under Militia. Um, so I got my... I got the, the Ninja Division price support in. And it's crazy what they sent me. Okay? They sent me... The six clans for Ninja All-Stars. This is one of the six clans. This is Kitsune. Um, and it's a whole clan. I think these are like... 50 bucks in the shops, right? Um, so you get all, I get, I think you get like 16 minis or something, like one, four, seven, nine, 11, uh, 13, 14, 15, uh, 14, 14. So you get all these minis in, in a box and I got all six of the clans. Okay, so, um, so I'm going to be raffling these off for my Extra Life campaign um, leading up to the live event. And then I'm going to give away, I got two of the actual um, full boxes for Ninja All-Stars. So I'm going to raffle off both of those at during the live event. But I want to raffle off at least three of these online um, for people that are uh, there. So there's going to be two ways to win. Uh, you can uh, you can do what you're doing right now. Leave comments in the live stream. Um, but you know if you really want better odds of winning, please donate to my Extra Life campaign. Uh, you can look it up under Play It Painted or under um, Octave Valar. I'll put a um, I'll put a link on my chat here on Twitch 
Um, and then if you follow me on social media, uh, on my Facebook page or uh, Instagram or whatever, I'll put those links there. Okay, so once again, Extra Life Children's Charity. Check this out. Did you guys notice that? That's in I I that's actually intentional, believe it or not. So it's pretty rad, right? That's a that's a great freaking call out there. I love it. Um, and it's on every single one of the like it's on every single one of the teams. You'll see that that little call out there. So, yeah, so here's another clan, Clan Aijin. Um, Ninja All-Stars is a super, super fun game. I really enjoyed Ninja All-Stars. And, um, you know, I have enough teams for Ninja All-Stars. If we wanted to start a league, we could totally do that. It's one of my favorite games of all time. But again, if you guys are interested in winning these, um, tune in Friday night, late night, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll raffle these off to people. And, and once again, you're eligible for winning to win um, some of these prizes for just commenting on the live feed. But ultimately, your odds are going to be much better if you uh, donate to, the, uh, to my Extra Life campaign. So Clan Ijin, this is another popular one. It's all the like demons. But yeah, dude, love the little call out. So cool. Anyway, um, yeah, yeah, you know, um, I'm, I'm friends with the, with the, uh, basically the main folks over at Ninja Division, and they're, as you can tell, they're very supportive of me, considering they sent me probably close to 400 bucks worth of product here, so pretty awesome. Anyway. Uh, so let's, uh, let's bring him back in. I know it's late at night. I have to get up early for work in the morning, but, uh, you're missing the Ika and the Tori clan. Nice. Not sure how to get your extra life link. You know what? I'm going to post it. Well, I'll post it under my Twitch, like in the Twitch chat that's permanent to the site. So you guys can see that. But anyways, here's here's uh, my King Shark. One final look at him. I think he's awesome. Yeah, he's gonna be fun. I want to put him on the table and play him. He's 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 just gonna be awesome. So, anyways, that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks, guys, for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I'll do later this week. You can expect to see Mist here get painted. And uh, I think what I owe, I think I owe Nelson a painted Heath Ledger Joker. So we'll work on that as well. Um, and then maybe even some Ninja All Stars because we got a whole bunch of it. <laughs> All right. So anyways, that's gonna do for this video. I want to thank everybody for watching. Have a good night, guys, and we'll catch you on the next one.